When aircrew take off on a training or operational sortie, they expect to return with the aircraft, but an emergency may make it necessary for them to abandon their aircraft during flight. Escape from high-speed aircraft is usually made by ejection seat, and in the following sequence an experimental ejection from a Canberra aircraft is shown. A rearward facing ejection seat was designed and a successful experimental ejection was made by a live subject. However, the modifications necessary to fit ejection seats in the rear crew positions was considered to be impracticable. Therefore, rear crew members make an unassisted escape by way of a slide from the Vulcan and by way of a side door from the Victor and Valiant. A study of escape drills could be made in the cabin of an actual V-bomber, but a more convenient method is to use a full-size model of the cabin and add to the difficulties of movement to a known and repeatable extent. This is done by mounting the cabin on the arm of the human centrifuge at the Institute of Aviation Medicine and rotating it until the required resultant G is applied to the subject in the cabin. We are looking downwards through the roof of the cabin and the escape door is in the bottom right hand corner of the picture. This is an example of an escape carried out under a resultant G of 2.5. That is to say the subject in this case weighs two and a half times his normal weight. At present rear crew members use constant wear parachutes and survival packs and when these are correctly fitted it is impossible to stand up straight. As a result of this, many crews unfasten their harnesses and leave the parachute and survival pack resting on the seat. If an emergency arises at this stage, the rear crew member must refasten the parachute before he can move to the door. This sequence shows just what is entailed. The complication of having to return to the seat to refasten the harness is shown here in the cabin on the centrifuge. With the current back Mark 20 parachute, one potential hazard is the movable sleeve containing the static line hook and the override knob. This can slide down a shoulder strap and obstruct the lug so that it cannot be positioned in the quick release box. Therefore valuable seconds may have to be wasted pushing the sleeve clear of the lug. It is essential that crew members learn to fit their parachutes by touch and do not rely on being able to use their eyes to locate the various straps. An experienced rear crew member wearing a partial pressure helmet became disoriented in a few seconds while trying to locate his straps visually. This sequence shows a prototype quick donning parachute and the automatic presentation of the shoulder straps is of interest, particularly as the subject cannot find them. He cannot see them and is unaccustomed to fitting by touch. This disorientation can result if the emergency causes the aircraft to spin and head movements are made at an angle to the axis of spin. Once the parachute has been refitted, the rear crew member has to get to his feet, and this can be prevented by the parachute pack catching under the headrest 
and preventing further upward movement. If he moves forward to ensure that the pack is clear, he may cause the survivor pack to twist and snag in the seat pan. Either of these hazards can prevent him from leaving his seat. A further hazard can arise if crew members attempt to slide sideways off the seat instead of standing up before moving. This is an example of a subject who attempted this maneuver and became wedged between the seats and spent 60 seconds struggling to extricate himself before he could start moving towards the door. Once on his feet, the crew member can still be in trouble with his survivor pack if he is unable for some reason to move the centre seat forward. For example, if the navigation plotter was dead or unconscious, as was the assumption in this experiment, the survival pack can become jammed between the two seats and effectively prevent any further movement towards the door. In subsequent experiments, escapes were made after this snag had occurred, but it is extremely difficult. Should the crew member fall on his way to the door, a small increase in G makes it impossible for him to get up again. Such an increase could be applied in the case of an aircraft spinning. Once at the door, care must be taken to ball up and make a clean exit, or the crew member may be caught up and spun violently. Two possible solutions to the time lag in refitting the parachute and getting up out of the seat before escape were studied. One shows a GQ prototype parachute with automatic presentation of the shoulder straps. It is shown here with the ML static seat and a sister cushion. Secondly, an Irving quickly donnable parachute. Again, the ML seat and a sister cushion are used. An example of an escape run under a resultant G of 2.5 is shown in the following sequence, and the subject's own commentary during his escape has been recorded. Emergency oxygen. Find it. 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 Right leg connected. Left leg. Right shoulder strap connected. Left one. Pulling down on both. Parachute harness connected. Unlocking. Ready to go. Static line, hooking on to nowhere, but to the bear. Right, ready to go. Um. The latest solution offered for rear crew members is the Handy Page swivel seat, now being evaluated in conjunction with the Irving Back Mark 40 parachute assembly and the assister cushion. Note that the static line is attached to the seat, thus eradicating the time spent in hooking up at the door. A static escape sequence by three Boscombe Down rear crew members from a Victor cabin using swivel seats illustrates the advantages of this system. It is intended to fit these seats in the rear crew positions of all V bombers.
After an escape from aircraft at high altitude, a static line actuates a barometric power unit which prevents the parachute from deploying until the crew member falls to approximately 12,000 feet above sea level. If the parachute deploys at high altitude, it might burst and fail to develop, as shown in this experiment. A crew member falling from high altitude tends to spin violently after the first few seconds of fall. In this demonstration, the subject has a cine camera mounted on his chest. The camera is fitted with an ultra-wide-angle lens, causing the horizon to appear curved. On reaching 12,000 feet above sea level, the barostat allows the parachute to open, the rotation ceases, and the crew member descends under a fully open parachute.